When you, arri- when you first arrived at Pucci six years ago, what impressed you most about the brand? What were you most excited about in terms of taking on this, um, this big new job? Well, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think my perception of Pucci before arriving was the one that most, most people have, that it's like Prince and it's psychedelic and, you know, and it's like to the house for like Jet Set uh, through the 50, 60s and 70s and so on. But when I got there and you arrive at the Palazzo Pucci, you've been there and so you know what it's like. And it's quite daunting because it's, you realize that this house is part of something bigger, which is this almost dynasty that's been there for 500, well, over 500 years. And this is kind of one part of the expression of that. But like the rest of it as well, this palazzo with, a, with this, mix of, uh, this, uh, this mix of classical sculptures and paintings and, uh, and then these Pucci prints in the middle of it, are, that's quite overwhelming. And it actually became the inspiration for my first collection as well because I immediately imagined this woman that like hung out in this place. At least I wanted to hang out there. So, so I thought that the girl would as well. And, uh, and it was a great starting point. And what about the, Mar- uh, uh, the Marquis uh, uh, Emilio Pucci himself as just a person, a figurehead? Did you relate to the guy? Like, did you find some, something inspirational about him? Well, it, uh, I mean, it's like you try to in your own little way. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pretend to be uh, uh, too similar to him. I mean, he's a Marquis again from a very, very old family. And, um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, but what I thought was very interesting was that he, before so many other uh, designers, became a very visible brand ambassador for his house. He, uh, he, was, he was part of like the the happy few in, uh, in, in the 60s and 70s in, uh, in Europe, in Italy. He was very international. And I, I, I think I identified with that because it kind of, that, that kind of role was something that I grew into there without really planning on it anyway, this uh, having, having a the kind of visibility that I didn't expect to have. Also the travel as well, he inspired himself very much from travel, which is uh, one of my main sources of inspiration as well, somehow, probably because I, I mean, I'm always on the go myself as well, so it's kind of hard not to pick up things as you go along. It's kind of interesting how, you know, Emilio Pucci himself really, be, you know, really was one of the first of these almost celebrity style designers. I mean, he himself embodied the lifestyle that he was selling in yeah. a weird way, no? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's like something that I find like such an, a, a helpful tool even in, in the designing is like living the dream, you know, it's like hanging out with the girls, like knowing what they like, what, where they're going, uh, you know, what, what they enjoy. And you kind of adjust what you're doing to that as well. And I think that's, you know, he really was like one of the pioneers in what you call today a lifestyle brand, which is kind of selling the whole idea, not just of the clothes, but that, they, that, it, um, that when you're buying into the brand or if you're purchasing something, you're kind of buying into that lifestyle a little bit as well, hopefully. You are always, I always see you in fantastic photos with all of these gaggle of models and these super fabulous women and you're, and, you're doing, and you're doing Poppy Delevingne's wedding dress, et cetera, et cetera. Has that always been something that you, you've always had these connections or did that really come about in these last six years at Pucci? Like, tell us a little bit about that. No, it's it really, so it, much of it has been through Pucci as well because it's like, you know, I'm still, in a way, I'm a little bit of a fashion baby. I mean, I have, uh, Pucci was my second big, big gig as a creative director. So, so it's really started taking off there. I did a little bit beforehand, but it's like naturally with Pucci it did, and that's what I mean with like the house. I, I, I did, it kind of seems to be a house that kind of attracts that type of um, uh, that type of uh, following and all, and so you kind of you kind of go with it, you know, and enjoy the ride. So, what was your first job in fashion, Peter? My very first job in fashion was that my very first job in fashion was actually making clothes for my sister when I was a kid. So, uh, uh, and I hope you still have those. So in your I think archive. she has them somewhere, but she's like, but she won't let me see them. Uh, well, she's probably like saving for her own retrospective. Huh? But um, but uh, yeah, no, I, st- I, I started really early, like making clothes, and uh, I think I had my first sewing machine when I was six or seven. And then when I was going to school, I. I I do some like wedding dresses for people and special orders like that. And um, 
But my very first job was actually working as a costume designer for um, a theater in Paris called uh, La Comédie Française. And I, I didn't expect it. I was in Paris. I'd like, I had arrived with like three boxes and a suitcase. And uh, you know, you take the jobs that you get. And, uh, and this one was like a, as an assistant costume designer. And I really enjoyed it. And, and it was a great experience. And you know, p creating costumes and like kind of getting into the psychology of, of clothes a little bit as well, not to sound pretentious, but you kind of have to when you're doing costumes. You, you have to know what's going on in a, in a different way. And I loved it. So. Was it hard to make the leap from theater to the runway? And when did you do that? Um, I didn't, uh, you know, it, it kind of like, I've been quite lucky in my, in my life, knock on wood. And uh, that I, when, um, uh, right after the, 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 the play, the first play that I've um, worked on came up, I got a call from um, Jean-Paul Gaultier's assistant. He was one of my heroes. And so when they proposed for me to come for an interview, I accepted. I, I went in there and... Uh, uh, Jean -Paul, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen Jean-Paul Gaultier in interviews, he talks a lot. And I couldn't understand a thing that he said, and I just kept nodding my head and saying, yes, 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 yes. And three days later, I had the job as his first assistant, and I didn't know how to do anything. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and what did you learn the most from Jean-Paul Gaultier? Um, what, well, I, I learned a lot. I think I owe him my, uh, uh, a lot of my fashion vocabulary today, because yeah, I think it's one of the, the greatest uh, designers in the last century. You know, he's like has so much talent and such a rich uh, uh, register of, uh, of, uh, of um, ideas as well. But like one thing he, he, he always taught me was, uh, or, uh, always, we always came back to was, when you're, doing something, when you're doing something new and extreme, put a little dose of something familiar into it, something in comfort zone, so people, don't, so, so people kind of find themselves in it, so it's not this alien idea. And uh, I, I've always tried to do that and adhere to it. So th that can be if you do, for example, when he did like the skirts for men, he did them in, in banker stripes, which is traditional suiting fabric, because it, it, that way it was just like a little bit more, the, the, a little bit more approachable. Yeah, well. rather than like a floral skirt for men. Exactly. Well, he's done those as well, I believe. <laughs> After Jean-Paul Gaultier, what, what was next? Uh, after Jean-Paul Gaultier, I went over to Christian Lacroix. And um, who ca who called on me at the time, and um, the, it was kind of a, in a way, a natural connection as well because uh, Christian's a, a great colorist. I love color, so so this, so I went over there. I didn't stay very long. I stayed for two years, and um, and after that, I I moved again, and uh, I got a call to, uh, from uh, Roberto Cavalli, which I believe is going to be here, and uh, he, he asked me to come and work with him in Italy, and it's like I hadn't thought about going to Italy before, and, uh, but I thought, why not, and there was, they had this like, wonderful, crazy universe that I thought I'll try, and, uh, and, uh, I, and it was a great success. I was very, very happy there, and we had some amazing years together, just having fun. It was kind of like a, a bit like a finishing school for me, because it's... Uh, before then, I'd had the, the vigor at Gaultier, and then the, um, the vigor at Gaultier, then at Lacroix, this like more poetic approach to fashion, more abstract, in a sense, mixed with something very Baroque. And Roberto just told me to, to go and have fun and do, and do what I love to do and all. And it kind of like allowed me to do, discover that in myself as well, maybe something a little bit less intellectual, but certainly much truer to myself as well. And, uh, and uh, I think that's probably how I practice today as well. So it's interesting because you've really um, bounced between French houses and Italian houses. Um, you've also worked at Ungaro, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely, yes. Uh, prior to Pucci. So in your experience, is there, a, you know, is it just a different sensibility? What, what does each one offer that you really identify with as a designer? Well, I... I mean, I, 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 I love working for, uh, I, I love working uh, both for Italians and for the French. I think the French have a, like a more, a, more of a subtle, seductive approach to, to the woman, whereas the Italians are more impulsive. They like more like the throwing color or mixed color and, uh, and it's more Baroque as well. But I, I, love, I love both and you know, like, most French houses produce in Italy, so it does rub off it already. There, there is a mix between, between the two. And for me, I mean, I'm, I'm from the woods in Norway, so, so they're, quite, they're quite similar in that sense already. 
In fact, I wanted to ask you if you noticed if there was a difference in the workmanship or the hand or the craftsmanship. Uh, do you think they're both at equal levels of, like when you're working with the best of the best, they're, they're both top tier? Well, you know, the, I, I love working with the, the French ateliers, especially the couture in the, the French ateliers is exceptional. They, the way they work, you know, the, the, the inside of couture garments is as beautiful, as not, if not more beautiful, than the outside of the garments. And there, there's a vigor to it, and there's a school of that. In the same breath, I love working in Italy. I really like, to, like anybody that has the chance to work in Italy, do, because it's, a, it's such a great experience. Um, the, the ateliers there, the seamstresses, everybody, they, they always give it their all. And it's always, like, at least for me, that's from a more Jamaican country, like crazy. And you think it's got like all in chaos and disorganized. But they, all, they always deliver. They always come through for you. Totally. And they have like such a beautiful hand. And it's like, I don't know, it's, there's a nobility to the Italian craftsmanship that, that, I, that I, I love and it moves me and I appreciate so much. I mean, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now with, without the help of all those people. So going back to Pucci for, uh, for a moment, um, when you came on board, um, what were kind of some of the first things that were important to you to establish when you were thinking about the reinvention of, the, of this historic label? Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a label that has a, it's a very, very strong identity, and there's advantages to that, of course, because it's like it, it, you have people's attention, if you will. There's also disadvantages because there's preconceived notions about what it should be, and even when people think that, oh, it should change, they don't, like deep in their mind, they still have this idea of what the house should be like. So for me, like the, the most important uh, st uh, step when I arrived there was I really wanted to define the woman. Because for me, every house should have a woman. And I thought that the, the recent history of Pucci had put so much accent on the print, which of course is a very important part of the house DNA, but that the woman had gotten a little bit forgotten in the process. And so for me, the, um, the, 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 the first step and the first... Uh, uh, and the first uh, point of departure was really like saying to myself, well, who is this woman? And I, I did it in a, in a funny way because it's like I, th I, thought, about, I, I thought about what, what the print signified to me and like the, the joyfulness, the, the colorfulness, the surprise, the rebellion of it, the sensuality of the movement. And I kind of like made myself an idea of this woman in my, in my head. Uh, of what, what she would be like, this woman that lo loved all those things, and that became the Pucci girl. And then you started hanging out with her. And then I started <laughs> hanging out with her, and I kind of discovered, like, I discovered uh, her Love in different Pucci places. That, like, that there's a couple here today as well, and it's like, they're a lot of fun, and, like, uh, and they're, they're beautiful, and uh, I'm always very happy when they wear my clothes, and especially sometimes when they, cuss, when they change them a little bit as well, because it's like, I think a woman's personality has so much to do with her beauty and what's go, what goes on in her mind, her wit, uh, her body language, all those things like apply to it. So when, when there's part of her personality that like kind of um, responds or answers to my clothes, I'm very happy. Now, just speaking, of, let, let's pick up this topic of the print, which is, you know, as most of you know, that's the bread and butter of um, the Pucci landscape and, the, and its universe. Um, Peter, I think you've been quite uh, inventive with your treatment of that print and pattern, and, and um, I mean, I know it up close and personal, seeing some of the, the workmanship details that you've done, but why don't you explain to them um, some of the ways that you reinterpret that, and you do it in a way that's actually creating pattern but not using print, for example? Well, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you're right, you know, it's one of the things that's very important when, when, when you are facing a house with such established tradition and prints that are today are still identified with a house even if they were made 50 or even 60 years ago. You kind of have to think, well, how, how are you going to make this look fresh and how are you going to make it look new? One of the things, I've, one of my mental games, I mean, I, I, I work a lot with instinct, so it's like I try to kind of find answers in the back of my head as much as in my conscious state. And one of my mind games when I first started was like, 
like what what what's a thousand ways to do the print without uh, without actually doing the print as well so that became embroideries it became knitwear it became it became patchworks it became the, it, it became making holes in things. It became just a movement or a seam on something. So it was so it, it was ways that for me I could defend very easily to somebody who said, "Well, it's not a print," but to me it was. It was the it was the graphics. So it it, it it adhered to the the spirit of the graphics, but not necessarily go, doing them literally. And then also also playing with them as well, like uh, dip tying them, aging them, like making them bigger, making them smaller, overlaying them with different patterns. Uh, what else? It's, uh, it's, it's like really I feel playing like you've done them. it all. <laughs> Like Seriously. Sometimes, sometimes when you're starting a new collection, you kind of think, oh, I've done it all. What, what can I do now? <laughs> but I think all designers kind of think that at, at some point anyway. How important are the archives in your design process? Um, they exist. And it's a, they exist, and they're a great heritage. Uh, I really have made a point of not, feel, of not being a slave to them because I think that... I really believe that a designer needs to, uh, if one of the duties of a designer, even in an established house, is finding his own message as well. And so when you have to, so when you, when you use archive uh, material like that, you really have to uh, personalize it in a way that comes naturally with the collection. So in some collections that can mean that I, I use them, I usually recolor them and I, I use them on different materials, different supports than, than what has been traditionally done. But I, try, I, I really try to use them when they feel right. Uh, I don't go too much into the archive because it can be quite daunting, you know. So it, uh, we all have moments where, uh, when you like, wonder, wonder what the heck you're doing in all of this. And so that then if you're going in and seeing the whole body of work of a successful designer, that doesn't help at all. I don't <laughs> recommend that to anybody. So, uh, so, so you really, you, you really use them when it when it's natural. Um, I mean, I I kind I kind of uh, call my process a way of being respectfully disrespectful, meaning that I'm there. I love Pucci, you know, it's a it's an amazing house. I love the the vibe of it, which is probably one of the most important things for me to bring forward. That there's like there's a joy of life that I that I can say that I share with uh, Ma the Marquis Emilio Pucci and, and I share with the house as well that it's a happy house and it should never not be a happy house but and so I'm there because I love it but it's also my job to change it and like I said to said to uh, uh, the, the owners and the family when I arrived I'm going to be doing things that you really don't like sometimes you know but it's my job to do that I need to push it forward and and, and Think of new ways, and sometimes they, they might be a little bit unfamiliar and all, but, you know, trust me on it. It's done with love, and that's how I go with it, the archives. Well, I think it's also you're in a unique position because you're one of the very few designers who is actually working with a family member of the house who has recently become the CEO. Yes. Um, you know, does she keep... Her father's spirit alive. I'm speaking of Laudomia Pucci. Yeah, very much so. You know, like uh, it is a it is a very very privileged uh, situation of, of being of working with somebody who has the entire knowledge of the house in her mind, and at the snap of fingers, she can tell you what year something uh, something came about. And uh, and I uh, and I have to say, you know, it's a it's. Having probably probably uh, probably the challenge is more for her to have me there because it's like I'm there to to uh, to change things again. You know, I think the, uh, the she knows that I do this with an affection for the house, but and I try again. I use her a little bit like a litmus paper sometimes, especially if it's something that that. I want to channel from the past or from uh, from the past body of work. I will exchange with her on it and and how it was done and also the techniques as well because uh, some of them are not used today. So it's really great to 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 find out about them and then kind of say, well, why don't we try to do it? Well, we'll do it with uh, today's technology, the en engineered prints uh, that they did at the time, but they did it more by chance, you know. And then today you have the you, you, you have the, the fortune that you can really work that and at, uh, at a click of a button, 
you've done what what they did like thousands of yards uh, of fabric to develop. That's crazy. It's crazy. Um, what about some, you know, for you as a designer, um, it's kind of a banal question, but inspiration for you, for all these collections. I mean, just, it's a, it's a constant output. Do you find yourself even, you know, scraping for ideas? Where, where, where is everything coming from? Well, you know, I, I think every season, like, I, I mean, I think I, uh, I, have, I kind of suffer from amnesia because like every season I go through the same motions of, of saying, oh, I don't have any more ideas, what's going on, and uh, I'm washed up, and it's like, I, and, you, and you, tr you, tr you have a hard time thinking about something new, and it, you kind of need, at least myself, I kind of have to go through that, that moment. Uh, usually it doesn't last too long, and thank God, because if not, I, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. So, but, but 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 you but you have that. I'm, I I try to be quite impulsive in my inspiration. I mean, it's like I've, and it's it can be a word, it can be it can be a word, it can be a color. You kind of like you search for a starting point, something that something that binds your attention, and 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 then you kind of you build on that. You kind of like you knock it around in your head, and then you start like filling in other pieces, and it's. A bit working with the subconscious in a way because you kind of you 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 kind of paint, you kind of create a picture with elements and then you kind of see what you have in front of you. So, like I said, like the first collection was really like the 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 big wow of coming into the Palazzo Pucci that uh, that became the starting point for the collection uh, when I started scuba diving and seeing the fish under sea and. Uh, I think it was in the Maldives where, it, uh, where I kind of realized that I wanted to do a collection around it. That became the, the underwater scuba collection. I, I, I was building a house in Greece, and it's like a, that became the Greek collection. So there's different things. I found a Loden coat in, uh, coat in a flea market, like an Austrian coat, and that became the Tyrolean collection. So it's, diff it's different things. What it, what it has in common, which I suppose is with me as well, is that there is an element of travel to it. And that's quite traditional to the house for Pucci historians. They can actually like trace um, Emilio's travels to the collections as well. Peter, I think one of the um, most consistent um, uh, themes of your work is that it's always sexy. Has it, has it ever not been? Has this always been sort of central to your work? Well, you know, the we have to make babies, so it's, I, that, that doesn't go away, does it? So, so no, I mean... We it's, can have you to thank for our overpopulation of the planet. Uh, well, you know, I hope so. so. I hope so, you know. It's like I, 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 I do like that somebody once said that like a good dress is one that a man wants to put on, and a, or no, a woman wants to put on and a man wants to take off. And which I think is a bit, which I think when you, when you get that right, it's a pretty successful dress. At least it tends to be for me. Um, I, I think I don't search, seek out to, 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 um, to make sexy. I, th I like a sensuality to it because I like women. I think women are beautiful, beautiful creatures. And, and when you make them feel desirable, there's like, you kind of sense a strength and a confidence to them that, uh, that I like to give to a woman as well, you know, and it's like, and, and so I think I, there's part of it is that and part of it also just as a guy liking to like enhance a woman and, uh, you know, make her feel desirable. You know, I can, I'm quite instinctive with how I work. I'm instincting with colors and, so, uh, you know, col colors for me, like, almost replicate uh, the emotions of, of food and appetite for me when I see a beautiful color. And the same when it's a beautiful, when I see a beautiful cut on a dress or something, it's like, you know, you get the same sensation of uh, as when you're kissing somebody that you like a lot, you know, so it's, it, it's pretty it, okay. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's interesting that you have almost a Mediterranean sensibility for your color palette, and yet you, you hail from the way north of Europe where it must have been quite white and gray, no? It's true, I mean, it, it is true. Like, that's been a subject of discussion many times. I don't know why, why it's like that. Uh, I mean, I, I, I had creative people in my family and I think 
my my mother as well. She was imported to Norway, and uh, and she was a bit of an exotic bird as well. So maybe maybe there's some some connection there. But I do love color very much, and you know, and it's a uh, uh, the north is fantastic for many things, but uh, but so is the south. You know, I think I think today anyway. You know, I think that that. What, what, what's great is when you can manage to create, create an international house. You know, there's certain things, of course, that's connected to Italy, but I still think, think of Pucci as international. Yeah. And what would you like to see for the brand in the next three to five years? Where do you, where do you want to take Pucci? A world domination. <laughs> you know, I... I, I I, I think I, I think you know it's it's difficult to it's difficult to project because certain things take more time and uh, than than others. But since I've gotten to Pucci, I've learned a new satisfaction beyond you know making pretty dresses or doing collections that were recognized by journalists. That there's also the uh, there's also the satisfaction when when there's a financial success as well. And today Pucci is twice as big as it was when I arrived, and. I'm proud of that and I'm proud of the people that have helped me with that and all the additional people that do that with me today. So it's really like growing the brand and, and as with people, making it as good as it could possibly be. And I mean, I think that if, we, if there's one, one duty that we have on this planet is to be the best we can be. And I, I think of Pucci as that way as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you guys have questions for Peter? I'm sure you all want to know about his house in Greece, right? <laughs> Where is it? Uh, I, I usually don't talk about it. That's, that's, my, that's, my, uh, that's my complete time off, but it's in the Cyclades, so it's like the White Islands. It's very nice there. I, I highly recommend Do Greece. <laughs> Do you want to stand up? Are we good? Just a question. Hi, thank you for being here. My name is Aisha Ramadan. Hi. I wanted to know how difficult or challenging is it for you to try to push the boundaries when working at Pucci? And is it always welcomed or are there red lines? Well, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting question because that's, that's one, you know, kind of like uh, knowing when to, when to push push the uh, when to push things further and when to kind of like uh, take it easy is one of the things that like is important part of of working with a house that's a, that's established as Pucci is but I try to do so instinctively and it kind of you know it's a bit like it's a bit like when you're when you're traveling a lot you know you want to go home once in a while and and so uh, so once in a while I allow myself to go home once in a while I'll do collections that kind of return home and are a little bit more in the comfort zone. But it really happens in an instinctual way, you know. It's, uh, and and um, I, think that, I think that you just have to go, go along with yourself. When, when I first arrived, I, I was, uh, you know, it was surprising who was open for the change and who was not. There, there, uh, but ultimately, you know, you have to stay true to yourself and that's when you're going to do the best job as a designer in any case. Thanks. Hi. So I'm I imparato l'italiano. Did you learn Italian though? No. Um, that, that was the question. <laughs> if, if you speak in Italian? If I speak Italian? Yes, I speak Italian. You know, Norway is a quite small country, so there's not that many people that want to talk to me they want in Norwegian. So I kind of have, to, so I, I had to learn Italian, but it's a great language, so it's okay. Yeah, it was a joke, actually. The real question is, um, there is some special project you're working on the next future that you can share with us? There's lots of them, but it's, uh, there, there's lots of them. There's like, we're starting some uh, immense project at, uh, in the beginning of the year, and I'm very happy about that because, it's, uh, because I get questions almost every week about that. And so um, answering, well, no, not yet, and all that is, uh, sometimes gets a bit boring. So that's the next, next biggie for us. And apart from that, you know, it's really been the, one of the big focuses has been like, expanding the brand and opening new shops everywhere, which is like actually quite a lot tougher than I thought it would be, you know. So, 
the, the, the meetings with the architects, kind of adapting it to that market as well. Uh, and so I think, our, well, the next one is a big new flagship in Milan, and then, and then uh, there's another one in Miami, so I get to go to Miami, which is okay. So, so those are the ones. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Kalispera in Kalispera. Greek. <laughs> okay, I'm glad to hear that you're building something in Greece, my husband. I'm trying. It's really difficult, though. <laughs> my question is just simple. Are you going to be expanding the handbags and shoes at any point within Pucci being more visible, especially in this region where it's 50% of the purchases? Uh, you know, it's a, obviously it's an important part of um, it's an important part of uh, a fashion house today, and the success of a fashion house as well. Um, the, we we actually the, one of the things I'm very proud of at Pucci is that we actually sell a lot of clothes, so, uh, a lot of them, and so that's really been like the priority. Now we're we're, we're really starting to to look at handbags, and it's time for that as well. I think. You know, you kind of have to you, you kind of have to gauge that, and for me, it's also been a bit of a timeline with when when is the client mature for the bag, or when is the woman mature enough that her bag will uh, seem convincing, and that's been a step by step process with Pucci because when I started, you know, when you thought about when you thought about the the house, you thought about the print. At least that's how the perception I got and the feedback I got was you didn't think about the woman, you thought about, uh, you thought about the print. And so then the, translating that into day bags, which is usually what most people do a business in, becomes tricky then because the, it becomes a printed bag, which there's not that many women that, um, that wear those, so they wear them only for special occasions. So for me, it was very important to get to that point where you associate the, uh, the brand, the house with with the woman when you think of Pucci, hopefully you think of the Pucci girl. And then you kind of start thinking, well, what's her bag like then? And so that it's not necessarily uh, a printed bag. It has the vibe that it shares the vibe with the print, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the print bag. So we're, we're really starting that process now, but I've wanted it to, to be convincing and I've wanted it to be done well as well, because it's like, you know, it's kind of today, the bags have become such an important part. They've kind of replaced what, what perfume used to be and things like that. And you need to get them right. If you start getting them wrong and you get onto that one, it's very difficult to kind of recuperate the right bag again. So, so it's taken a little bit of time, but now I think we're on the right course. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I just, every season has its uh, every season has a a, um, a a moment that's a, a moment that's kind of pivotal and feels super important. I, I think it's almost I, I I don't think I can like say that there's that there's one thing uh, that there's one particular season that has felt different you know that kind of kind of because because it becomes that becomes the collections as well i kind of have to see it back through the collections and then it kind of goes back to this like uh, uh question that i get from journalists sometimes after the show what was your favorite piece and it's like okay so what's who's your favorite child you know so uh, it's like they're all <laughs> it, it kind of goes back to that so it's like i think you, when you start when you start a collection and you get into it, you kind of have to fall in love with the concept and you have to fall in love with what you and feel passionate about what what you're going to be saying and just say it in a hundred ways in your mind until it gets boring for you and probably really boring for your assistants as well but but really believe in it so 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 I think it's a every season i don't know if that answers it but uh yeah okay good we have time for one last question please Hi, Peter. Thanks for being here. Hey. <laughs> uh, how do you interpret your personal style? Your personal style. How do you interpret it? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. How do you interpret your personal style? Your own style. Oh, my personal style? Um, so, well, All white. It's kind of what you see. I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm somewhat a little bit like a 
frustrated child from the 70s, but I don't, <laughs> you know, I think I, my parents waited way too long to get on to the baby business. So maybe that's why I do dresses like I do today, so, they, so people will like, so I won't waste the time, but it's, uh, I, th I think that there's, there's, there tends to be a 70s vibe, right, into what I do, and I don't know, I don't particularly try to do it, but it is that way for, for me as well, I kind of, it works for me because I, uh, I don't think I look look like most designers. I mean, you know, I probably should be out in some woods chopping down a tree or something like that. And so, so you kind of have to make the best with what you have, right? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, and thank you all for attending.